you when I told her about Senator Brady. I, I would like to share with you what she said to me about Senator Bill Brady. And with this Democrat leading independent who acknowledged that she had in fact voted for Barack Obama said to me about Bill Brady was that she was planning on voting for him in November. And why? Uh, because he was the first guy running for governor that she could remember who actually talked about bringing jobs in to Illinois. Everywhere I go, I ask the people of Illinois, do you feel better today than you did prior to Pat Quinn and Rod Magojevich? And their answer is no. Do you want higher taxes? No. Do you want to continue to bankroll the state's deficit and debt on the backs of our children and grandchildren? No. And do you want to continue the culture of corruption of the Bogoyevich Quinn era? No. Ladies and gentlemen, these messages are simple. Yes, we face challenges, looming deficits and debt. It is important that as we reach out to independents and Democrats and Republicans that we remind them what has happened over the last eight years. Over $70 billion in unfunded pension liabilities, over half of which was achieved or accumulated under Bogoyevich and Quinn in eight years. Over $20 billion in bonded indebtedness, over half of which was accumulated in the last eight years under Bogoyevich and Quinn. And over $6 billion in unpaid bills on the backs of our health care providers, our colleges, our schools, our human service providers, our cities and our counties. Yes, our obligations are horrifying. Over $130 billion that if we don't change things, we're going to leave to our children and grandchildren to repay. And it doesn't have to be that way. You see, in business, we not only look at the liability side of the balance sheet, but we look at the assets or opportunities. And you and I know there is no state with greater opportunities than what we have here in Illinois. Our economy rooted in an agricultural based in our soil and agribusiness. Our energy resources rooted in our coal, our wind, and our oil. Our infrastructure right of way. Do you know that we have more rail, river, road, and air right of way in this state per capita than almost any other state in the nation? The finest colleges and universities, the finest health care institutions, 13 million people wanting to go to work, the fifth largest state and the 18th largest economy that is ready to prove to the nation that we can get the job done. But what has stood in our way is politicians putting politics in front of policy. Our message is simple. If we want to move to create jobs in Illinois rather than lose jobs, we have to examine what the problems have been. You know, I jokingly say if higher taxes, higher fees, more regulation, more litigation, deficits and debt produce jobs, we'd be the number one job producing state in the nation. <laughs> but we're not. But that answer is simple. Stop talking about raising taxes on families and businesses and start talking about reducing the tax burden. Stop pushing capital investment to neighboring states and eliminate the bureaucracy and regulation that has moved capital and private sector jobs to other states. And in an in litigious society that has burdened families and businesses. Yes, if we do these things, the 700,000 jobs that we've lost in the last 10 years and the 200,000 jobs that we've lost in the last 12 months will stay here and come back. That's what our goal is. That's what our mission is. You see, we know we need more revenues. Pat Quinn's answer to more revenues is to increase tax rates on families and businesses, and it simply won't work. The way to raise revenues is to bring jobs back, create wealth for Illinois families and revenues to state governments so that we can begin paying down the backlog of unpaid bills. But in the meantime, we have got to have the discipline, the backbone, and the competence 
to reduce government spending and live within our means.